Hi friends, happy Sunday. Courtney here, and I am so grateful to be back with you this week. Um, when I was thinking this week of how I wanted to spend my time with you, I was reminded of how every time we gathered together at church, we shared what we were thankful for. And so I wanna give you a few seconds and ask you, what is one thing that this from this week that you are thankful for? What was your favorite part of this week? Now, I'm going to encourage you that for the rest of this week, every morning you wake up and say to yourself, I'm going to find a new way to be thankful today. And then every night before you go to bed, I want you to reflect on your day and ask what it is that you were actually thankful for. That way we can continue to remind ourselves of how, the God, of how our God is continually around us at all times and all places. Now, I was thinking of how easy it is for me to think that my time with God is equal to my time at church. And so since we have been away from church for over three months now, it can become very easy to say, well, I've not spent any time with God. Now we know that's not true, even though the church is the holy temple and the place that we worship our God, that is not the only place that we meet God. And I think an awareness of his presence and trying to find ways to find him each and every day is a really quick and easy way to realize that the, the God that we know, the God that loves us, and the God that we worship is not just in a church building, it's not just at the mission, it's not just when we're together, but it's every single time that we take a breath of air, every single time that we are surrounded by creation. And that's going to be every single moment of our lives. Now, another way though, that I can be a bit more intentional in spending time with God and ensuring that I feel a connection to God is by reading scripture. And we all know that. We study scripture together, we read scripture together, we pray and our prayers come from scripture a lot of times. Um, but I want to spend some time actually reading directly from scripture for a while with you guys. So we're going to read some Psalms together. And the first one that we're going to start off with today is a Psalm that we're probably all really familiar with. I'm sure that you've heard this in uh, probably a lot of different places in your life, um, but I want us all to have one that we are a little bit familiar with and then talk about it and think about some things that the Lord is trying to tell us through this psalm. So I'm going to encourage you, you're probably in a really comfy spot right now already, but maybe get into an even comfier position. Maybe you want to close your eyes during this time while I read to you Psalm 23. I'm going to be reading the first six verses. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I have a story to share with you um, about a sheep from New Zealand. And this sheep's name was Shrek. And one day Shrek got lost from the rest of his flock and from his shepherd. And Shrek ended up lost for six full years. 
And during that time, Shrek lived in caves and found different food that he could eat um, on his own and wandering around without anyone finding him until six years later, he was found. Now, how do you think this sheep might look after six years of not having a shepherd? Well, if you don't know, a sheep like Shrek grows a bunch of wool, wool that makes sweaters and socks and all sorts of goods. And a shepherd is typically responsible for shearing that, sh that sheep every year to get that wool off of them. And so Shrek had not seen a shepherd or shears in six whole years. And so once they found him, he had 60 pounds of wool attached to him. And so he had a really hard time walking at this point and he even had a hard time breathing because he was just so weighed down by this extra wool, the extra 60 pounds of wool. Think about it, that is probably more than you weigh right now, or at least close to it. So it was like he was carrying a child with him everywhere that he went. And that would be very, very hard for a sheep. I'm really surprised that Shrek was able to make it. But once he was reunited with his shepherd, that was one of the first things that a shepherd did for him was take off all of that wool and all of that weight and baggage so that way he could be happy and healthy again. So we know that shepherds take care of sheep. That shepherd was taking care of Shrek and I'm sure that even though um, he had other sheep to tend to and to care for, I bet that in those six years, there was probably not a day that went by that that shepherd did not think of his lost sheep, Shrek. And that is what David, who wrote Psalm 23, is trying to connect us to. The first verse in, in Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. He wants to make it personal for us. He wants for whenever you read Psalm 20, whenever you read Psalm 23, to know that the Lord is not just my shepherd, David's shepherd, not just Courtney's shepherd, but he is your shepherd too. That is a personal relationship and one in which God is always looking for you and always wanting you nearby. The Lord is your shepherd. He guides you, he provides for you, and he protects you. You don't have to worry because you have everything you need. You don't need to struggle or strive. Weariness or sadness does not have the final say, and you're not going to get lost. He leads you along the right paths for his name's sake. And it is only because the shepherd or God is so good that you are able to be still and to rest and know that you have true peace because your God is near you. And that is a great place to be, to be a shepherd or to be a sheep being looked after by a shepherd. But the Lord doesn't want us to stop there. We don't, he doesn't want us to just blindly follow him throughout life. He wants to invite us into a deeper, more intimate relationship with him. And so if we go back and look towards the end of the Psalm, whenever we get to verse five, it no longer is talking about a sheep and a shepherd. It turns into David identifying that God has actually prepared a table for him. God has prepared a table for us. We have all become these honorary gifts guest of God the Father. He has set a table for us. He has said that the enemy might be angry about this, that we are sitting at a table with God the Father, but he is there to protect us. And the very great thing about that table is that it isn't just for you and for me. That table is open to all. God invites all of us to dine with him, to feast with him at this table. And one day when heaven comes to earth, that is the great plan, that we are all going to sit at a huge long table with one another, 
feasting with one another in what God has been preparing for us and providing for us. That is what he has in store for us, our fr my friends. And that fills me with a lot of joy and a lot of comfort to know that one day I will come face to face with my loving God, the shepherd who has guided me, and I will get to sit right next to him at the table. So, I hope that you take this message with you this week and think about how it may impact the way that you interact with your friends and family. Think about how one day when heaven comes to earth, they are going to be sitting right next to you as you sit right next to God and they sit right next to God. We are all going to have an opportunity to experience the best, most perfect, most idolistic world that the Lord has ever intended for us. And I, for one, am very excited for that day. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you that you do guide us and lead us. And we thank you that you um, promise to never leave us behind. I pray that you will make us kingdom-minded, that we will forever be reminded that you've invited us to the table, and therefore we should invite those around us to the table. May you continue to show us your love, and may we continue to show an outpouring of that love to those around us. It is in your name that we pray, Heavenly Father. Amen. My friends, I hope you have a wonderful week. I can't wait to see you so soon. Bye.